All right, thanks for tuning in to another physics lesson with Mr. M. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can solve pretty much any physics problem that you have. Um, this video is really, really good for like beginner physics students. Um, I know I have a lot of videos out there that show specifically how to do like these specific pro physics problems, but in this video, I'm gonna really break down how to solve really any physics problem because I pretty much do this in all of my physics videos. Um, so this is really good, a really good video to watch if you're just starting out um, because you can use this method pretty much on any uh, physics problems that you, that you might have. And so the first step is to read the problem carefully. This is probably one of the, the um, most amount of uh, issues that I get with the students is they, they're like, oh, I didn't see that, or oh, that's what that meant, or um, just putting the wrong number down. So first and foremost, please, please, please make sure that you're reading the problem carefully. It's going to make a difference. The second step, can you interpret what the problem is saying by drawing a picture? By drawing a picture, it shows that you are really understanding what the problem is saying. And for myself, it's really good for me to get a visual of what's going on. Um, and even not only just a picture, but if you could also label that picture with the information given in the problem, I think it's just going to help as a student understand what's going on in the problem. Once you've drawn your picture, the next step is to list your knowns and your unknowns. So what did the problem tell you? All right, what values and what units did they tell you? And what are they asking for? So by organizing what you know and what you don't know, this is gonna help set you up to pick the right equation and then therefore get the answer that you want. Once you've listed your knowns and unknowns, the next step is to check to make sure that you're in proper units. There are specific SI units or metric units that are used for physics problems. And so you have to, sometimes you might have to convert what they gave you to the proper SI unit. And so that is another common mistake is that students forget to um, convert their units properly to SI units. And then once you've done all of that, the last step is based on the information that you have, make sure that you're using the correct equation. And then as long as you have the correct equation, once you plug everything into the equation, solving should be one of the e more, more easier steps. So let's kind of put all of this into practice. I have an example problem here, and we're just going to take you step by step so that no matter what physics problem you're given, if you follow these five steps, you're going to give yourself the best chance of answering correctly. So here we have a baseball bat. It exerts a force of 100 newtons onto a 2,000 gram baseball. What will be the acceleration of the baseball? All right, so this is a problem where it, it would make sense to draw a picture, all right? We know what a baseball bat looks like, and it's hitting a baseball. And your pictures obviously don't have to look that good. I'm by no means an artist whatsoever. You're just trying to get the gist of it. So stick figures and whatever, whatever you need to use, it's okay as long as it's giving you an idea of what's going on. So the baseball bat is hitting the baseball and it's applying a force to the baseball. And because of that, the baseball is then going to accelerate. It's going to travel, all right? And the question is asking, what's going to be that acceleration? So we read the problem carefully. We have understood it by drawing a picture. Our next step is to list our knowns and our unknowns. So what do we know and what are they asking us for? So one thing that we know, we have a force of 100 newtons. So we're going to label that and we're going to list it. We also know we have a 2,000 gram baseball. So that is the mass of the baseball. It's telling us like how much it weighs. So our mass was 2000 grams. It's important that you are using the correct symbols and the correct units as you're listing 
your knowns and your unknowns. And that's something that you'll know as you're going through whatever physics unit you have, you should be taught what those symbols are. So like force was capital F and has un units of capital N for newtons. A 2000 gram baseball, it's assuming that we're talking about its mass. We use lowercase m for mass and so forth. So the specifics of the letters you'll understand once you're in the particular units that you have, okay? So what don't we know? Well, it tells us, or it asks us, in this case, most cases, they're gonna ask you to find something. So what will be the acceleration of the baseball? So what we don't know is we don't know the acceleration, and that's lowercase a. All right, now that we have our knowns and our unknowns, we have to check to make sure that we have proper units, okay? And one thing that I notice here is that for our mass, mass always needs to be in kilograms, not grams. So we have to make that unit conversion. And so if you're going from grams to kilograms, that's a three decimal shift to your left. And so our mass is now, now becomes 2.0 kilograms. Like I said, this is a very common student mistake is to bypass doing unit conversions. Um, and that's something, again, that as you're going in each particular unit, your teacher ought to kind of point out what unit conversions to look out for. Okay, so some common ones are like not converting centimeters to meters or millimeters to meters or grams to kilograms and so forth. All right. Besides that, all of our units are good. So now that we've checked for proper units, now we need to use and find the correct equation. Well, since I have force, mass, and acceleration, there's only one equation that we should use, and that is F equals MA. So once again, as you're going through each unit, your teacher will point out what equations are out there. You'll probably have a list of them. And so all you really have to do is look at what you know and what you don't know, all right? You're looking at these letters, F, M, and A, the ones out in front, and you're trying to figure out what equation includes those symbols. Once you've done that, and once you've found the correct equation, it's just a matter of plugging in those values. So if our force is 100 newtons, then we're gonna plug 100 newtons into F. If my mass, or my lowercase m, is two kilograms, I'm gonna plug that into m. Since we don't know what the acceleration is, we're gonna leave it as lowercase a. So when we plug everything in, 100 newtons is gonna equal two kilograms times a. And most of these physics problems, all you really need is your basic algebra one skills. So how are we gonna get our acceleration, that lowercase a, all by itself? Well, to get it by itself, we're just gonna divide by our 2.0. So 100 divided by 2.0 is gonna give us our acceleration of 50, in this case, meters per second squared. So hopefully, you can use these five steps in whatever unit that you're learning about to help you solve any physics problem that you have. And as always, thanks for tuning in.